Hi guys, happy Monday. I'm sitting here, I'm watching Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump just wildly gesticulating on the TV, and I'm making a YouTube video. Uh, we're gonna learn today something probably neither of them know how to do, which is to make a fully featured drawing in Autodesk. So what you wanna start off with is, first you want to make the part that you're going to, to create the drawing from. Right here, this is the part I'm going to use. Now we're going to save it. So I'm going to go to save as, so I make sure I save it in the right place. I got all kinds of parts on here. Uh, we're going to go to make sure to save it. Let's see, my documents. We're going to make it sure to save it in Venter. Uh, we're going to make sure to save it in our folder. I'll say that for the fourth time. You just find the Inventor folder, pick your specific folder right here. Keen's fun time projects. I'm gonna save it as flange plate to draw. And it's an IPT uh, inventor part. Save that, it's not in the active project. Even if it's not, that's okay. Yes, let's continue to save. All right, so here we go, we got our part. And that's really all we're gonna do. So you're gonna use your skills to create some type of part that you can do. And then you're gonna go right here and you're gonna, you're gonna save it and you're gonna go to new. You're gonna start this time, you're gonna start a standard drawing, standard.idw, right? W stands for drawing. There we go, we start our drawing. Now you see we've got our drawing right here. I changed my background to white, yours is probably gonna be yellow. Here's the flange plate right here. It's still open in a little tab there on the bottom. Okay, now I need to, the first thing I'm gonna do is place my view. So I'm gonna use this base button to do that. And I'm gonna click right here, open an existing file. Now the cool thing is, if you have a file already open, the last thing you had to open or the last thing you saved, something like that, it's gonna be automatically there. But if you can't find it there, you just go to Inventor, uh, let's see, the Fun Time Projects, the Flange Plate to Draw. You can see a little preview of it pop up right there. You're gonna open that. Has not been saved, uh-oh. No, I thought I just did that. Uh, yes. All right, well, we'll forge on anyways. Okay, uh, <clears throat> now you see here, this is not the view I'm looking for. Uh, I want the isometric view. So let's try isometric top right, isometric, isometric bottom right, bottom left. Actually, none of these are really what I want. Well, this one's not bad. That's pretty good, actually. That look, you can see the top view, you can see the front view, you can see the right view. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna click OK, and I'm gonna place it right there. Then I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna click on OK. That's gonna stop placing views. Okay, now you can see this. If you wanna change it, what you have to do is go right here until you see that little red box appear, and you right click and you go to Edit View. Right, then you can come back to this menu here. Now there are different things you can check and uncheck here. You can change uh, whether it's shaded or not by clicking on these buttons. I like to leave it shaded. You can change the scale so you can make it bigger or smaller by changing this number. Like if you do two to one, it's gonna get a lot bigger. Right, And you can see it changed. It's now more of a drawing style rather than a shaded in style. I like it the way it is. The only thing I kinda wanna get rid of are the hidden lines right there, but that's okay, I think I'll, we'll, just, we'll just go with it for now. Okay, so we have our isometric view. You can see it's nicely shaded. We can tell what the part looks like. Now we're gonna do our detail views. So I'm gonna go to base again. Now I like to start with the front view for this one. Let's see, so uh, now where is it? Okay, there it is. So I gotta find my front view, current view right there, mm, top. No, front, right, that's the back. Let's try the let's try the left view, that should be it. Yeah, there we go, the left view. That's, even though it's labeled as left, right, that's just an issue with the orientation of our view cube, right? Like if we click right here, and then we can go to uh, set current view as, and you can set it as the top. I don't know why we can't set it as the front. That's fine. Uh, we can go right here, top, okay. Anyways, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, here's the view that we want. So we selected it using view cube. We go to finish custom view and we're gonna place it right here, okay? And now I can immediately drag over, I can do my right view and I can immediately drag up and do my top view. Perfect. So I'm gonna click and then I'm gonna right click and create that. 
All right, there they are. You can see default is to put all the hidden lines in there for you. That's pretty nice. We like that. Okay, so we can see it right now. This is good. Now we have our bases uh, placed. We just need to annotate them, right? We need to add the dimensions. Maybe we'll put in a section view later. We'll do all that stuff. We're going to come right here to annotate and we're going to do a dimension. So we got all kinds of dimensions we can do. We're going to click on it, uh, click OK. And now this part's important. This part's annoying, to be honest with you. OK, we can see the diameter is 5 inches, right? The diameter is 5 inches. I'm going to double click on it. I'm going to hide dimension value. Then I'm going to type right here, diameter, get that symbol, diameter 5.00. Now I'm gonna highlight that. I'm gonna click on the pencil. I'm gonna highlight that. I'm gonna change the size to 0.240. I'm gonna click OK. There we go. Now it's a readable dimension. Okay. Uh, let's see, let's do another one. Let's dimension each of these circles. So I'm gonna click on the circle. That makes the leader line. I can see this one is 0.50. I'll go through it a little bit quicker, 0 0.50. And uh, I'm going to highlight click on this, highlight that, and we'll do a 0.24. OK. And OK. Looks good. Now we know how big that one is. We'll just assume the other ones are the same size. Don't necessarily need to do a redundant dimension. Let's put a couple others on here. Uh, we'll go ahead and put this one on there. Right there. I'm going to drag down if that works. Did that not work? Let's see, click there and click there, drag down. Okay, remember to avoid dimensioning in between the views. Try to keep it on the outside. 0.22, okay, high dimension value, 0.22. This one's not a diameter, right, or a radius. It's, or sorry, it's not a diameter, it's just the width of that. So we'll click OK. Again, we'll do it there. We'll change the size so that we can actually read it, which is always good. 0.22, OK. Oh, that didn't work. Oh, yes, because I forgot to highlight it. Yep, love it. There we go. 0.22. Perfect. Now I can see it. I'm going to keep going like that. Okay. Now, <clears throat> here you can do that. In the sketch, uh, one more thing. Let's not forget this. Let's add our center line. Center line bisector. No, center line. Creates a center line for the selected edges, center pattern, center mark. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's make the center marks of our circles. Oh, we're going to have to do a couple of clicks here. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. OK, and now we're going to do a dimension between two center marks. So I'm going to click right here on this center mark. Oops, for my first, the starting point of my dimension. And I'll click right there for the ending point of my dimension. Let's see. And you know what? I don't think I'm going to do it there. I think I want to go at the 90 degree angle. So let's do dimension right here between this one and this one. There we go. That looks good. So now you can see where my first one starts. 1.65, hide that dimension value. 1.65. Um, and I will edit this. 0.240. OK. And there we go. All right, now there are other dimensions we can put on. I don't want to take up a ton of time on the video talking about that when there's other things to cover. Um, you can do construction lines if you want by going to the sketch tab right here. You can click, go to the tangent line right there, go to the tangent line right there. Uh, there's a construction line and one of those nice light lines that helps us line everything up. That one's sort of optional whether you want to put it on there or not. There we go. Snap onto that. Snap onto that top part right there. Perfect. You can add more construction lines going down here like that. If you'd like, um, what else can we add? That's looking pretty good. Let's do a section line so we can show the inside of a part. A lot of people have hidden lines. If you have hidden lines, it might be a good idea to include a section line. So <clears throat> let's see. I think I'm going to put my section line over here. I may have to end up moving these, uh, the dimensions a little bit, but I think it'll work out all right. Uh, let's go back to place views. Oh, we'll finish our sketch. Sorry. So we got our construction lines on there. We got our hidden lines. We got our object lines. We got our dimension lines, extension lines. We're getting all types of lines. We're going to get our uh, section line in there and our, what are those called? Yeah, our section line and our section break line too. 
Here we go, section view. So we wanna place a view, a section view now. So now when you're placing the section view, it requires multiple clicks in sequence. First, you're gonna click the section button. Then you're gonna click on the box that you want to section. So I wanna section this view right here. Then you're gonna to click to start the section break line. You're going to click to end the section break line. And then you're going to right click to continue. Okay, so it is a left click, uh, it's a left click on section, left click to start the line, left click to end the line, right click to do it. Okay, so now I can choose which style I want. I think that style's looking good. You can scale it up or down. You can write some annotations right here. You can write the section view, the scale. Let's see if I can change the size on this. Again, click OK. I'm not even sure if that'll work. I have trouble with those things. And right there, it looks like it did work. We got a nice and big section AA, scale one to one. Now you can make other types of dimensions from this line. Uh, for instance, I could go over here and I could dimension from here to here. I don't know if that's necessarily the best way to do it, um, but it, it certainly is one way, 0 0.15, 15, so you can see the height of that. Change that so it's actually readable. 0.24, okay, okay, and that is good. Um, that's, you know, that's kind of the right idea. I think that's pretty much what we're looking for. Of course, you could put more dimensions on there. You would want to dimension this circle. You would want to dimension everything that you need. I'm not gonna show every single one of the dimensions just to save some time, but you get the idea. All right, now, if you want to further mess with this, you can get a nice zoom going on your computer, and then you can go ahead and you can use the snipping tool, right? Now we all know how to get to the snipping tool. You go to search and you type in snip snipping tool, and then you just uh, drag your cursor around the entire page like that, or you could do you know just the inside of the thing. That's not what we wanted to do. Let's undo that. Uh, edit. Uh, nope. Control Z, okay, you know what, we messed up, whatever. Here we go, let's do another one. This time I'm gonna just do the inside of this so we can see it a little bit better if we want. Okay, and we'll go to File, Save As. And we're gonna now note where we save it. We're gonna save it on the desktop. I'm gonna save it as Autodesk Drawing Flange. So I give it a nice specific name, right? And I make sure to note, okay, I'm saving it on the desktop. You could save it in the documents folder, wherever you wanna do it. Go ahead and save it. And then we'll go right here and we're gonna find our paint program, paint. There we go. We click on it and we're going to go right here to open. We're gonna find the desktop and we're going to look for our Autodesk drawing flange. There we go, we open it up. Now we can do cool stuff like we can add arrows to annotate things. So if you wanna make a little, that's not what I wanted. Uh, here we go, we got the undo button. This is what I want. Uh, okay, you can add a little arrow right there. I don't know why that's so thick. Maybe we can do something to make it nice and thin. Uh, fill, whatever, I don't know. I haven't played with, uh, with paint too much to be perfectly honest with you, but it's a great way to annotate lines, right? If you wanna say like, if you want to use a little bit of text, where's my text? Uh, view, no, home, cut, copy, slacks. Ah, oh, there we go, there's my text button. Yours probably looks slightly different. All right, I can say construction line, and then, oops, okay. And then I can go right here, and I can, with my pencil, I can draw a nice, let's use this one. I can draw another a nice. Uh, let's see. Uh, not that one. Uh, well, this is not making for a great video. Anyways, the point is here. We'll just use one of these. Call it good. Uh, I always get sucked into this trap. Construction line. There we go. You can see the construction line. Anyways, uh, I'll let you take over from there. Oh, you can. Oh yeah, yeah, you can zoom. All right. Anyways, I'll let you take over from there. You can come up with probably some really amazing things. I'm really excited to see everything that we create. And uh, thanks for watching.